Hello, my name is Eric Luttrell. I'm a professor in the English department here at Texas A&M University in Corpus Christi. And I'm going to talk about course mapping for Blackboard as part of our best practices in online instruction class. I'm going to be going over examples from two different online classes that I teach that are both set up a, a little bit differently and uh, throw out some examples and suggestions about ways you might organize your Blackboard class the most important thing I think to remember is that although a lot of students are very savvy in Blackboard, uh, some of them are not. So we don't want to presume that our students know how to get around in Blackboard at the beginning. That's why at the very beginning of a class and even a couple of weeks before the class starts, I'll send, or I'll post an announcement as soon as I make Blackboard available. I'll post an announcement that uh, instructs students uh, what they need to do first. Uh, this is going to include getting their textbook and that sort of thing. But it's also going to give them instructions about how to get into Blackboard and see the schedule and the syllabus and the get the information through Blackboard that they're going to need. Now, if they don't know how to get into Blackboard, uh, I can't expect them to even access the announcement. So I'll send that announcement out as an email as well as an announcement that's built into Blackboard. So when they get the email, they can see the instructions there. Now in this case, I have links to a YouTube video where I go over how to use Blackboard in that particular class. So they can watch the video first. I'm presuming most people can use uh, YouTube, but you don't actually have to do all that and make a, your own video, uh, as long as you have step-by-step -step instructions within that announcement that is also an email, that they can read the instructions from the email. The next thing to think about is what you want students to see the first time they enter your site or every time they click on the link for your class's Blackboard page. That's going to include things like banners. Uh, you can design your own banner and add it so that they don't get confused with other classes. Uh, the banner can sort of communicate something about your class visually. So here's the banner for my online literature course where we start with uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh and the, the Mesopotamian Epic of Ap Atrahasis. Uh, I just include those cuneiform tablets in the background as well as the uh, different texts through the ages that they're going to be reading in translation. Uh, for my Foundations of Rhetoric class, I just give them little visual cues about foundations in ancient Greece, which is where we start off. But more important than that is how can the first page they see help orient them quickly and intuitively to whatever point they are in the semester, not just the first time they enter Blackboard, uh, but at any given week during the semester, uh, how can you help uh, quickly orient them to what they need to be doing at that time, what uh, is coming up, uh, what uh, quizzes or assignments or, or whatever. So in my literature class, the first thing they see is the announcements page. And that is because in the announcements, I go over a lot of what they need to do that week. That announcement will go out every Monday morning. I have those units set up on a weekly schedule so that uh, at noon on a Monday, uh, whatever assignments they had the week before, those are due. And then I uh, presume that the week starts for them, the new unit starts Monday at noon. But I'll send that announcement out uh, before noon, early Monday morning, just to remind them if there's any last minute people who haven't taken the quiz yet. But all of that is the first thing they see when they open Blackboard. They'll see that announcement. Alternatively, in my composition class, the first thing they'll see is a schedule of the entire semester. Uh, unfortunately, this schedule doesn't change. Uh, you could actually uh, set it up so that you had to manually uh, rearrange the schedule, or you could include a schedule for each week as a, a content piece within that one page and then just rearrange them so that uh, the present week is always on top. I didn't do that for this uh, class. I'll let students just sort of scroll down to whichever week it is. But this schedule is what lets them know every week what they need to read, what uh, assignments they need to do, and what they need to submit that week. If there's a test coming up, if there's an essay due, and for each week, I have a link to either a lecture video that I put up on YouTube and links to readings. This might be a description of readings they have from the uh, hard copy textbook that they already have purchased. Uh, it might be links to articles that are available for free, uh, magazine articles, newspaper articles, uh, up to the minute uh, discussions that I want to bring into a class discussion videos produced by other entities like TED Talks or BBC uh, short videos. 
but also quizzes that they have due, uh, peer review assignments that are going to be due that week, and essays and other major assignments that are due that week. Now the big problem with this is that uh, if you include too much text into well, one page, it could become overwhelming and people could easily overlook some of the more important things. So I have a color code here that uh, is pretty standard throughout my uh, class so that once they realize that uh, a sort of light blue highlight means that this is a peer review assignment and they have to do that peer review assignment on time because uh, after the due date then the assignments will be redistributed so that other uh, people in the class can then review their peers. So it's very important that they get that done on time uh, so they can look at each unit and see that, or each week and see that this week uh, I've got to do this by this time. Uh, also each week will probably have a quiz, not every week, sometimes I, I won't give a quiz if there's a, a major assignment like an essay due, but the quizzes are in this darker blue uh, highlight and then the major assignments that are worth 10, 20 percent of their grade, like an essay, are highlighted in yellow with uh, a red font. That's just so that at a glance they can see what's coming uh, without some of those more important uh, dates uh, being lost in the, in the other black and white text. Then once they figure out what they have to do this week, they'll go back up here to the menu on the left and they'll click on quizzes if there's a, a quiz to take. That will lead them to, uh, they'll have to figure out which quiz it is, but I'll usually only make one quiz visible at a time so that there's no confusion. Uh, once a quiz has come due, I'll remove it from this page so that uh, they'll still be able to see their grade if they've already taken it, but it will no longer appear as something that they need to uh, finish. Uh, the only thing that they'll see is the quiz that at present they need to take. If there's a peer review assignment due that week, then they'll go over here and click on peer review assignments and then click view complete assignment. Uh, they'll actually have to go there twice, the first time to do their own submission, their own work, answer the questions uh, themselves. Then the second time they'll have to go in after that first submission phase is over, then they'll have to go in to uh, review and uh, potentially grade the assignments produced by two or three of their uh, fellow classmates. And then with essays, they'll see that uh, an essay is coming due, then click on the essays tab, and there they'll have uh, the instructions about what's expected of that essay and that sort of thing. As well as the grading rubric, the specific criteria I'm looking for, uh, in my class, I uh, go over all of this in a, a lecture video, but uh, as long as that information is there for them to read, especially well in advance, you will have students who, right from the beginning of the semester, want to know what's required of the essay that's due in a month. So you definitely want to have that up there as soon as possible. So obviously the first thing that they see every time they go into Blackboard is that schedule, and from there they know where they need to go to uh, complete the uh, assigned readings and assignments. Another alternative, in my rhetoric class, every time students first enter the class Blackboard site, they see the unit that we're working on at the present time. And it is up at the top. And so as we complete a unit, I'll move it down to the bottom. It'll still be visible, but the one that's at the top is the one they need to be working on at the present. All of these units uh, are on the reading section here. So they're all there all the way back to the beginning of the semester. But the one they need to focus on is the one that's at the top. Another option is organizing everything into units, uh, which I've done here for my online literature course. Now, there is a schedule of readings in this course, which works pretty much like the one that I went over already, uh, where they can see everything all on one page that's going to be due for the entire semester, and they get a, a sense of how to organize their week and see that each week is sort of set up the same way, except for uh, times like the week where they uh, all they have to work on is their online midterm exams and their uh, first essay. But in this case, I've arranged everything into units where instead of having to go to separate pages, readings on one page and the quiz on another page and peer review on another page, I have everything set up. Uh, each week is its own unit. You don't have to arrange your units by week, but I find that students adapt to that more easily. That way they know that each new week has new readings, new assignments, uh, new deadlines, uh, but the deadlines fall on the same day every week. In this class, all the uh, deadlines are uh, every Monday at uh, 12 noon, 
uh, at 12 noon, the new week starts, and that's the, the deadline for quizzes and discussion forum posts so that they are in a habit, whatever their own individual schedules are, if they have to work during the week and uh, do most of their work for the class during the weekend, uh, or conversely, if they'd rather work during the week like regular college students that are in the classroom, uh, they can do that, uh, but the uh, due date is gonna be the same. They can or organize their week however works best for them, but the unit is a week. And I put everything they need to focus on that week on its own page. And each of those pages is listed in chronological order in the menu on the left. Uh, they'll have seven different uh, units where we have seven different sets of readings and quizzes and discussion forums for each one. Then they'll have a midterm uh, and their first essay is due and then we'll start with unit eight through 13. But the, the menu is arranged in chronological order, which it was not done that way in my other class. Uh, the one with the schedule organizing everything and then a separate uh, tab for quizzes and discussion forums and, and that sort of thing on the left. Within these units, uh, I have links to videos, uh, video lectures that I've produced myself. Uh, and when you do that, you have some choices. You can uh, do the mashup, uh, YouTube mashup, in which it'll open a video within uh, a smaller window. Uh, I find that there are sometimes problems when students want to maximize that window. I find that sometimes I'm able to maximize this window, sometimes I'm not. So uh, frequently I'll uh, just include a link to a YouTube video uh, with a picture and a URL that's visible that'll just take them out of Blackboard and into YouTube. Besides, uh, so directly below the video lectures, after they've watched these lectures, I want them to then do the first part of a peer review assignment. So here's the link for that uh, with the due dates highlighted so they don't overlook them, they don't forget about them. Uh, there's also a link to a quiz, and in all of these I include uh, pictures, and every quiz in this entire uh, class will have this graphic attached to it. That is so that they don't uh, overlook uh, the, uh, how small the, the, the quiz link would be if it didn't have that uh, graphic there. Each unit will also have a discussion forum, and even though they could go to the discussion forum link on the left, I have a, another link to that uh, discussion forum, uh, the discussion forum for each unit uh, within the unit uh, page. I will also have suggested optional uh, re research material. That is for students who are just generally interested in what I've talked about and want to find out more. It's also for students who are going to write an essay about something we've discussed in that unit and want to find, and I want to recommend certain material uh, as opposed to other material they might just come across on the internet. And because there's so much to a lot of the things that I bring up in, in class that there's just way more than that I would like them to learn that I could possibly cover and require them to learn for a quiz, uh, I like to include these things, but uh, I do want to be sure that it's marked optional so that they know that uh, this is not something that is required. I put it down at the bottom after the quiz and discussion forum so that they know this is just something completely uh, uh, additional if they are interested in it. And within these units, I can put my own material that uh, is there to help them uh, figure out the, the text if it's an especially difficult one. Uh, for example, reading the Iliad, there are a lot of characters that are mentioned that are not relevant at all. Uh, they're just sort of mentioned as an aside, someone that an audience 2,500 years ago would recognize, but today people wouldn't and don't need to know to understand this particular reading. So I include character lists, links to resources that uh, if they're having trouble figuring out what's going on, I would rather them use some of these resources rather than Schmoop or Gradesaver or one of these sites that's really oversimplifying and uh, introducing really cliche and unhelpful information. Uh, they're going to, many of the students are going to look for these sorts of things, whether it's Wikipedia or whatever. Uh, here I'm going to try to give them the, the best and the most uh, insightful uh, additional resources because these units are set up by week, uh, if this was a two or three day a week class, I might say, just read a few of these pages from the textbook, and then in class I would uh, talk about, you know, what they need to know between that reading and then the, the next reading. Uh, with a, a unit that goes for an entire week, uh, I may want to assign them just a few pages and then uh, a few pages from the main text, 
uh, the hard copy text that they have, then a link to a scholarly article or something. Um, in this case, I have them read parts of the Epic of Gilgamesh that are in the standard Babylonian version from about five centuries BCE and the old Babylonian version, which is a thousand years older. Uh, and I, those are in different places in the same book, but I lay it out, lay out the reading here and say, okay, read these pages first, then skip to this other part of the book, read the old Babylonian version, then skip back. So they can see that uh, they can sort of redact this text together themselves. Then in the middle of all of that, there is a, a new tablet that has been discovered since the publication of the, the hard copy that they're using. And I have them read uh, about the discovery of that, a uh, synopsis of it, as well as a translation of that new fragment of, of a tablet. In the middle of that too, I'll also want them to watch my lecture videos uh, at a certain point in the reading process so that I can then bring all of that together before they go on and read the next few pages from the original text. Uh, I want to be sure all that is made clear within that unit, preferably right at the beginning. This is the kind of thing that I would have just put in sequential order if I had them uh, the all at one schedule, uh, like the, the other example. But uh, in some, some of the cases, I, I need to have the chronology of their reading and viewing set up for them in this unit. But in those cases, I, I also have a little uh, content section just for that supplemental reading. Each of these units also has a discussion forum. Uh, I think this is very important in an online class because it takes the place of a uh, group discussion that we might have in the classroom. It gives the students a chance to talk to each other uh, rather than just listen to my lectures, read the material, and then express themselves, uh, express their uh, learning from it through essays or uh, exams and that sort of thing. Uh, they're gonna be confused by things that I have forgotten were confusing because I've been teaching this stuff for so long, uh, I may have forgotten what it was like to read it for the first time. Here they can uh, help each other out uh, and let each other know that yes, this is difficult. You're not the only person having a problem with this. So I encourage them in the discussion forum to share their complaints, uh, their points of confusion, ask each other questions, and I'll monitor these conversations and I'll uh, respond every now and then, but I wanna give the students a little bit of time to respond to each other. Uh, because I could step in and answer each question, but sometimes the other students can, and that gives those students uh, an awareness of what their potential expertise is that they could then turn into an essay. Uh, I tell my students in all my classes that your essays start with conversations. Uh, when you see how other people read a text and you wanna suggest a new way to read it, a new interpretation, or you wanna bring in a new piece of context that helps us understand it or, or think of the text in a new way, they, they don't realize that they have that capability until this conversation happens. And so uh, I always try to remind them that the discussion forum is where your contribution to the class in whatever form it might be, uh, essay or whatever, starts in these discussions. But I've gotta set those discussions up, make them, in this case, I've made them uh, graded assignments. They've each got particular due dates and that sort of thing. There's one for each reading unit. But this is my attempt to add something like a classroom discussion to an online class. So the only uh, assignments that are not included in a unit, uh, a reading unit, uh, listed on the left are the ones that have their own sections like the midterm exam and the essay. And because those are both due after they complete unit seven, uh, I have them listed chronological order on the left. In order to give students some flexibility with writing their essays and, and taking their exams, uh, realizing that some of them work nine to five during the week, I try to give them an entire week to do those two uh, things. So they, there's no readings or any other assignments. Um, and all they have to do is work on the essay and uh, do the midterm exam. But that includes reviewing uh, past material. And one of the things they wanna do is review their uh, past quizzes. That's not something that's very intuitive. Uh, so in my announcement for that week, uh, I will give all the instructions for how to do the midterm exam. And then I'll also include this uh, infographic that shows them how to, on Blackboard, uh, go in and find their past quizzes, see the questions that they answered, uh, to see how they uh, did, whether they got them right or wrong. Uh, I don't actually uh, make the correct answer available. I tell them they have to go back and, you know, once they figure out a question they got wrong, I'm not just gonna tell them what the right answer is. They have to go back to that uh, either the reading or the lecture and figure it out. Because if I just tell them what it is, they're not learning, 
the concept or the, you know, the thing I want them to learn, they're just learning an answer to a multiple choice question. Uh, the goal with the quizzes is to show where they need to go back and review, not to prepare them for the midterm. And of course, the goal of the class is not to prepare them for an exam. The goal of the exam is to see how well they have learned the material from the class. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I created uh, introductory videos for students showing them how to use the Blackboard uh, set up for uh, each of my two online classes. And just in case you're interested and you want to see more examples of the way I uh, laid things out, uh, I'll put links to those videos uh, down below on uh, in the description section of YouTube, uh, as well as include it with uh, material for the best practices and online course development class. Uh, but that's just the way I organize my classes. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other great ways to do it that I, I haven't thought of or uh, haven't had time to integrate. Uh, but I hope they've given you some ideas uh, or at least sort of brought up things for you to consider uh, in, your, uh, in setting up your own classes. Uh, I think the most important thing to recognize is that uh, something, uh, the setup might make perfect sense to us as instructors but we want to think in terms of somebody who is coming at this from the first time, uh, doesn't know what the content of the class is, much less how to find it, and uh, try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, get feedback from other people that don't know anything about your class. Uh, that, that can really help. And of course, set up the class, uh, maybe a discussion forum, uh, specifically to let students know what they find confusing, uh, because uh, that way, that, that will help you at the end of the semester uh, reorganize the layout, the, the course mapping, to make it more intuitive for students in the next semester. So I wish you the best of luck in setting up your own class.